Hi, I'm Tim Martin. I'm an artist who loves to experiment and an earth science teacher who loves to explore. Through rock climbing and hiking, working in clay and photography, I'm always observing the natural world. If you're a student, teacher, or curious explorer, get ready for an adventure in science and art. In this video lesson, I want to give you an introduction to mineral shape, sometimes referred to as habit. There are a number of different words that we use to describe this wide diversity of shapes that we see in the minerals. So let's dig in and take a look at some of these examples. This mineral here you can see has needle-like crystals radiating out from one point. This is often referred to as being acicular. This small piece of native copper, notice how it branches almost like a tree limb. This is referred to arborescence. Arborescence is related to being tree-like. These minerals are often referred to as being banded. You can see that there are stripes. Sometimes the stripes are the same color, sometimes the stripes are different color. Here again is a banded example of a mineral. Similar to banded is the term concentric. Here we can see the bands on this malachite are in concentric rings. So this may be banded or it can be referred to as concentric. These minerals, such as this kyanite, are good examples of bladed minerals. Blades like the blade of grass or blades like a knife blade. You can see this piece of gypsum is very thin, almost the shape of a blade. Next is a term that's referred to as columnar or sometimes referred to as prismatic. You can see this quartz crystal is similar to the shape of a column, very uniform and elongated, or we could refer to it as a regular prism. Here we can see several more columnar minerals that are embedded within another. In this case, it's tourmaline that's embedded within quartz and feldspar. When prismatic minerals are very short, sometimes they're referred to as stubby. This is a good example of a stubby prismatic crystal. These minerals here are good examples of dendrites. To be dendritic is like a branching of a tree or branches of a stream system. And so these are examples of dendritic minerals. One term that some of you may be familiar with, with jewelry. These small crystals here inside of this particular geode are often referred to as druze or druzy. So that can be small tiny crystals lining a cavity or it may be on the outside of a rock. Small crystals like this can be referred to as druzy. This mineral is a great example of a fibrous mineral and we can see soft mineral fibers that actually are flexible. On to geodes. Geodes are rock cavities that are filled with other minerals, so they may look fairly plain on the outside. When sawn or cut open, we can see the crystal incrustation on the inside. Here's another geode that just has a small hole into it. Micaceous and lamellar. There are many crystals that are in the family of being mica minerals. This is muscovite, and you can see it flakes off in these thin, flat layers. This can be referred to as lamellar, or it can be referred to as micaceous. Sometimes we see another mineral, such as this aventurine, which is a green micaceous mineral. Little tiny flecks of mica making up this particular rock. Sometimes there's no particular shape at all. When we see that, a mineral such as this may be referred to as being massive. There's no distinct crystal shapes that are visible. So just a large chunk of this rock may be referred to as massive. On to this particular type of gypsum called selenite. This is sometimes referred to as being platy. It may resemble a stack of plates and the mineral may come in relatively thin, flat layers, but notice that these layers are thicker than what we see when we talk about the micaceous minerals. 
Over here we have some examples of radiating minerals. Notice sort of the starburst pattern. This is the mineral wave light. We can see mineral crystals radiating out from a central point. Same with this mineral here where the minerals radiate out away from a central point. Sometimes that can also be referred to as stellate, like a star. This is a nice example of a reticulated mineral. The word reticulated has to do with a network or a net of different angled shapes that are interlocked together. Here are several fine examples of what some refer to as a desert rose. Interesting, it's from Oklahoma, not particularly a desert region, but this is a barite crystal and it is in the form of a rose shape or sometimes just referred to as a mineral flower. Minerals such as this may also be referred to as a flower or a rose, even though they're a little less distinct compared to the barite. This is a fine example of a mineral that's striated. Notice that there are parallel lines along the faces of these minerals. These are known as striations. This piece of tourmaline also is a very good example of a striated mineral. The directions of striations may be useful for identifying the type of mineral. This is a special form of the mineral pyrite or iron sulfide, and we refer to this type of mineral crystal as a mineral sun for obvious reasons. Over here we have an example of the native element copper. You notice that some places are shiny, some places are a little dull. Maybe that's best explained with these two pennies. We have one penny that's quite new and shiny, another one that's old and tarnished. We refer to this loss of the metallic luster as tarnish. Some minerals have distinct tarnish, such as copper, or this is a copper-rich mineral that's fairly unique because when it tarnishes, it has an iridescent tarnish, so multi-colors in its tarnished surface. Here we have some examples of mineral twins. Twins are when minerals grow side by side or grow together. Here we can see the mineral quartz. There's one smaller crystal growing beside the larger one. These are the mineral starlight. This has not been cut. This is how the mineral actually forms and they grow in this unique perpendicular fashion. This barite is a single crystal similar to the desert flower or desert rose. Here we can see a single mineral crystal. Here we can see a twinned mineral crystal. Many times when minerals twin, there can be multiples of them growing together, such as this gypsum, where there are numerous twinned minerals. Same for these gypsum blades, where there are numerous ones of the gypsum blades that are intertwined and growing together. Finally, a word about a few distinct mineral shapes. These should not be confused with cleavage, but some minerals grow in very unique forms. One of them is an example such as this iron sulfide, which grows in very distinct cube forms. And so here we can see a naturally uncut mineral cube. This sample is a cluster of mineral cubes. Some minerals, such as this one, are a regular shape. This may be referred to as prismatic, but if you look at it end on, you can distinctly see that there are six sides. So we could say that this mineral is a hexagonal prism. Minerals such as this garnet is unique because this, again, has not been cut. This is as I found it, and it has 12 unique faces. So this is a dodecahedral mineral. Here's another example of a dodecahedral garnet. You can see this mineral has very distinct facets or sides, and this is as it was found in the wall of a mine in western North Carolina. So this is just a brief introduction into some of the unique shapes in which minerals may be found. I hope you have an appreciation and look around at the world of diversity in many different minerals. Thanks for watching and I hope you join me again on another 
Mineralogy or Geology video.